In today's episode, I will teach you about events and how they create domino effects, and this will make you a better player. Welcome to Lotto's Lab, episode 71, something like that, can't remember. But the point is, today we are learning about events and what is an outcome of an event. I Probably no one will know this nomenclature because it's literally what I made up to describe this concept that we have. So this is, I'm pulling up Ascent right now with a typical default uh, setup positioning um, at the beginning of the round that you will typically see in pro play or even in ranked to some degree. <laughs> anyway, my point is there's something in a game that triggers a domino effect. I call that thing an event. Event is something that happens in the game. Like for example, someone dies, someone pushes, someone uh, fall backs, someone smokes, smoke is disappearing, and so on. Anything that creates substantial amount of pressure to create an event. This is a very broad term, but I'm going to be using it because it describes a lot of stuff at the same time, which is going to be useful for this concept. So now, when that event happens, it should trigger a response from the teammates and from the opponents at the same time. And understanding that this happens in the game will make you a better player, will make you a better player because you will be able to read your opponents what they're gonna do, right? So for example, when I'm gonna be playing this Ascent and the round starts, right? Most likely, there's gonna be a jet overpicking short and dying. When this player dies here on short, right? What will happen when this player dies is that it creates an event that people will play off. So there's going to be a domino effect. And there are a few possibilities. So for example, when this jet dies, there's a chance that the Sova will instantly rotate or instantly use an arrow or a drone to retake the space on B main to be certain what's happening. Because when the defenders lose map control by overpicking on defense, like with an example of this jet, that creates an empty space on short that the players on defense have to um, have to have to compensate for, right? So there's gonna be movement on the map, which is the domino effect of this event of the jet dying. So. The Sova, let's assume, he's going to use an arrow to clear B main. I mean, the best arrow would be just here, right? That would be the best arrow that you can do. And then, when he's not getting anything out of it, he might either rotate for spawn to go to mid, or for market to go to mid to compensate for the loss of map control on mid, and the killjoy might actually push out. Or it's going to be the reverse. Sova is going to push out, and the killjoy is going to go back maybe close the market doors and then go to spawn to make sure that she will now control mid while the Sova controls B main because they compensate for the last loss of the map control that they lost because of the jet overpicking on short. Now, the thing is, if I'm playing Cypher in this case, if I'm holding B main, right, before the jet dies, if I'm holding B main and this jet literally dies that moment, I will most likely reposition even more patiently than if that jet, jet wouldn't have died. So I'm gonna play passively. I might be holding from behind this box here, right? From behind the hut, or um, or even uh, I will I will uh, like just hold from here or hold from here or hold from here, because I understand that this event, the jet dying, might create an opportunity to get a kill because someone is now going to try to compensate for the loss of map control by over peeking into the B main. And then I get an easy kill if I'm playing patiently, right? So the thing is, if I'll be just holding like I, like I was holding before, like this, this Sova gets a very easy confrontation with me because this is most likely the angle that someone will be standing on. So I want to be patient and let him go actively being like unsus unsuspecting my position. And this is like very important to understand that this can happen in the game. Because what I see in ranked is most people completely ignoring that something happened on the map and playing like nothing happened. So for example, this cypher from B main suddenly would be pushing into B main when the jet dies. 
and that makes him most likely then tagged by the drone or by the arrow and getting killed because those two players will try to kill him because they need to be aggressive when they lost already the jet on the fucking short, right? So this is what you need to understand. When something happens on the map, it creates a ripple effect, a domino effect that affects every single player and makes them proactive or makes them rotate or makes them overpeak again because they need to do something, right? So when you're gaining an advantage in that way that creates an event, you need to be actually more passive. You don't have to be proactive anymore and you can read what can happen from the opponents because they need to do something because of that event that happened. In this case, the jet overpeaking. And similarly, like for example, let's say I'm playing, I actually had this situation on split yesterday. I was playing Cypher on, uh, on A and I was holding a main like this. This is me holding A main. Our omen smoked properly, actually, like this. And there was, I didn't know about him, but there was a chamber going into A main. And when this chamber was standing here, right, he was waiting out the smoke. And the thing is, he didn't push when the smoke dissipated. He was just checking ramp. But when a second smoke appeared, the moment that smoke appeared, he pushed out. So I had to be vigilant because I need to react the moment an event happens. And this chamber was uh, responding to the event happening, which is the smoke. So whenever there's a smoke appearing, you can literally expect someone instantly pushing out. When the smoke's disappearing, it can also affect a player's movement, right? Which is very basic, but people don't think about it. I don't know why. And also, there's a higher chance that someone will peek. And I think actually that happened yesterday with this chamber. Because someone from them died on mid. Let's assume it was again Jet. Because why not? So Jet died on mid. So they lose one attacker. So the lurker on A is more, let's say, urgent to get something done. And that will most likely make him peek out. Right? So... When that happens, again, you need to be more patient and wait for that peak because you already had an advantage, right? And in case you lose, let's, let's reverse the roles right now, okay? Let's reverse the roles. So we're going to make me lose a player on mid. Let's say I have a race on vents and the jet kills the race. The race dies, right? This is my jet, by the way, wrong color. This is my race that is dying in vents. So if I'm the chamber in this case, I'm going to be very patient because the player from A will most likely now change his position or reposition towards, you know, middle of the map or Haven or CT if he's standing up close here because he doesn't control anything anymore on mid and he can be run over. So he cannot really stand A close because maybe they will go into vents and kill him from Haven. Heaven. I mean, right? So he might reposition. So if you're going to hear the footsteps, that's the moment when you strike. So the events that are happening, typically a player dying or utility being used, is something that requires in that moment your attention. And one of the biggest mistakes that I personally do when that happens is when an event is happening, I look at the minimap. And that's when I die because someone peeks and then chat is going off like, oh, timing, man. Oh, no, it's not timing. It's me being a bad player because I looked at the minimap when I should be paying attention to the game because that's when the ripple effect is going. That's where the dominoes falls. And I expect movement. I expect reaction. Right. So I need to be more aware in that specific moment because that's that typically how players will react in the game. And that is very important for you as a player to understand when to look at the minimap. Also, I wouldn't be looking at the minimap if people would communicate in the game, but we cannot do anything about that, right? Because typically people would literally describe to you what is happening on the minimap. Like in pro players, like with pro players, if you'll be playing with pro players, you would barely look at the minimap because your teammates give you so many informations that you build the minimap in your head so you never have to look at it. That's how it works in pro play, you know? But in ranked, you need to look at it sometimes. So just don't do it when an event is happening and it triggers the domino effect. I hope you guys learned something from today. Uh, I think it's a very important um, episode that is probably boring to listen to, but it's a concept that many people fail to understand, and I hope you guys learned something.
Thank you for watching. See you guys around.